two, two three, three tack. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here with uh, at the 2018 Basel uh, Watch Fair with the man, the myth, the legend, the il- incredible Jean Claude Biver. And I guess the first thing we should discuss is the fact that we're both wearing this incredibly cool watch. I know you only made ten of them, and it was a great honor and privilege for Revolution, myself and Bruce, to be able to purchase one. It's incredible because I know you are also configuring these watches how you imagine the client should have them. And it's funny that you did it in exactly the colors of what I'm wearing today. So. This is incredible. <laughs> it's it's marvelous because the ten are all they all have a different color. That's right, and we have twenty percent of the of, of the and we, and yes, we yes. have twenty percent of the of the production. Fantastic. And that is color I like the That's most, fantastic. and this is the color you like the most. Fabulous. I hope everybody will say the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've got it pretty accurate. It's yes. great because I went jogging this morning with my buddy uh, George Bamford, and he's so excited about getting his watch, Andrew, aka Orange Watch Collector. Yeah, Andrew got it yesterday. Oh, really? Fantastic. Um, so well, tell us a little bit about this and what it means to Zenith. I mean, this you, means the future of tradition. Right. Zenith, the real message, the strong message, the deep message, the only message. Right. Zenith must be the future of tradition. Yes. And what? was the tradition of Zenith. It was high precision, yes. accuracy. Yes. They won 2,830 Grand Prix of accuracy. Yes. So what's the future of the traditional accuracy? It's this, because it's Fabulous. a new escapement, right. it's a new way to have a watch run, yes. and it gives you one second a day. So this is the future of the tradition of accuracy. What is the future of El Primero, which is 50 years old? Yes. The future of El Primero that tells you one tenth is one hundredth. Of a second. Yeah. And we have done which the El achieved. Primero one hundredth. Yeah. So you see, yeah. when your concept is to build, yes. to be the future of tradition, yes. you take your tradition and you imagine how is or how would this tradition have evoluted if in 50 years yes. and then you do it if the founders were alive today what would they do to make the, the watch, exactly. watches of today and that is the brilliant element of this concept because nobody right. is doing this Amazing. some people like Hublot are disruption yes. they do they disrupt yes. tradition to create a new one absolutely and some other brands are repeating tradition sure. and we are the future of tradition, tradition. And that is the strength of Zenith. Now we have also at Zenith an incredible case. Yes, I love the new device. You immediately recognize it yes. as being Zenith. Yes. We have even new materials. Yes, aluminum and, and silicon. Bond and bond. that is also very important yes. because we need a watch that immediately remembers you or tells you, hey, hey, it's a Zenith watch. Well, which is really nice about the new Defy that you've just launched, you know? It's got this beautiful sort of tonneau case, but with these great angled bevels on it. It is simultaneously sort of uh, aggressive, and, 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 but at the same time, very classic looking. And, exactly. And it fits perfectly on the wrist, 41 mm. Um, you've done it in three versions, plain dial on a strap, uh, on a, uh, a bracelet, bracelet. A wonderful integrated bracelet, bracelet yeah. which is fantastic. fantastic. Also, and bracelet. both in titanium. And then also in a titanium case with a beautiful skeletonized movement, which I think is the first time you've had on an elite movement. Uh, yes. yes. And it turned out great. You know? Yes, it's great. It's absolutely great. Um, yeah, it's the first we have on the yes. yes, absolutely. This is yes. what I really like because I remember when we had that conversation a couple of years ago, and I said, Mr. Beaver, what are you going to do with um, Zenith? Zenith. Are you going to extrapolate it by having, you know, kind of, you know Alec <laughs> Monopoly or yeah. with, with um, celebrities or football teams? And you said, no. No. Uh, the star of Zenith is going to be the pioneering uh, technology of yeah. accuracy and timekeeping, and that's exactly what you've done. Yeah. You know, we've Phenomenal. done it. Phenomenal. We have done what we said we'd do. Okay, but on the subject of accuracy, I think we have to talk about Besançon. We have to talk about the chronometer uh, certificate, chronograph tourbillon, which is now um, not just, it was used to be cost certified, but now is, is going to be Besançon certified yes. because Besançon tests the entire watch as opposed to just the movement. That's right? the big, big, yes. big difference. Yes. You know, when you test the movement, it's quite, uh, 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 it's flexible for the production yes. because you test 100 movements, right. you get 100 movements back yes. with the certificate, and then you choose which one you put in which case. Sure. So sure. it gives huge flexibility. Yes. But the customer, right. will he still have a chronometer sure. uh, uh, watch yeah. uh, accuracy which, which in, his, in, his, in his watch? Yeah. Not necessarily. Yeah. Why? Because once you have it in the case, yes. you have pressures. 
Uh, number two, once we have it in the case, you have the influence of material. Yes. If it's in steel, yes. it might magnetize. Right. Because the watch is anti-magnetic in the movement. Yes. But it has never been anti-magnetic in the material that are around the watch, right. the, the movement, yes. which means the watch case. Yes. So, oh, for all these reasons, Besançon always said, since the 18th century, it's we will point. never check for you a movement. Right. Give us the full watch, watch yes. and we're going to check the watch. Yes. And that's much different. And that makes the high value of uh, Besançon. Yes. And the other value of Besançon is that Besançon is the officially official European standard institute for time measuring. Fantastic. They have the title. And in Europe, anything that has to be measured, yes. one kilo if it's one kilo, one meter if it's one yes. meter, one yes. second if it's one second, yes. goes through Besançon. It means we have now the official European standard, boom, right. you get the stamp, and the stamp is a uh, viper okay. with uh, the head of the viper. Yes. And that, we have, are now the first brand to have this. that goes through Besançon, it's and that have that. You know, it's also a, a demonstration of the commitment to quality as well, because again, as we were discussing, it's a much different sort of challenge to certify a movement alone as a cost uh, chronometer versus a actual watch, because you know, you get the movements back and then you, it's a challenge to the watchmaker to make sure that he is creating something that in every stage, when he's casing it, when he's doing the montage, in every stage he's making sure that the watch is still optimized for the best performance. And I know you, like a lot of other people out there, have received watches with cost certificates and you're like, oh yeah, this is super accurate, look at that certificate, and you put your watch on your wrist, and it's like, why does this not tell the time that the certificate says, right? And that's kind of the answer, they test the movement. So now what exactly. Mr. Bieber wants to do, in addition to, because when he brought out his, uh, his chronograph tourbillon, he wanted to demonstrate that he could bring it at a much lower uh, yes. cost than the majority of the competition, but he wanted to demonstrate also the that quality. Could, the quality was there and he could make it cost certified, right? Because before that, there was only two tourbillons that were cost certified. It was uh, Patek and uh, Chopin. And now he has become probably the leader, I would say, in cost leader. certified, cost yes. certified tourbillons. Yes. yes, we have produced last year 2,000 tourbillons. Amazing. So I think probably in the history of cross certified nobody has ever produced this it's going to become the, the leader. So let's talk about um, also you know you uh, George uh, Mafford is a friend of ours and and he said that he had a life changing conversation with you when you decide, you said to him listen George why do you want to work with brands that are antagonistic towards you when yes. you can work with brands that love you but you have to rethink and reshape your mentality and stop becoming a customizer of other people's products and go to the the deeper stage of this and start yes. to create watches together with the brands from the yes. very onset. And then you made him your official the, yes. customizer. That is the that is the deeper. Yes. You have to transform yourself into an official yes. uh, uh, tuner yes. of a brand. Yes, exactly. AMG. Which I have. I have one of these. So great. Yeah. AMG yeah. is the official tuner of Mercedes. Mercedes. And that is how they have become even. Yes. That is why Mercedes bought them at yes. the end of the yes. day. But Mercedes had the foresight to say, you know what, I'm going to give engine blocks to these guys because they're yeah. making such amazing cars. I'm uh, going to exactly. share my technology with these guys because exactly. they're, they're also bringing ideas to us. Yes. Right. So tell us a little bit about this. That is what we're doing with George. Yeah. And so but I love the fact that you, now you're not just innovating the style of the watch, but even the case material of the watch, yes. right? So yes. So carbon fiber for the case. Carbon fiber for the case, that's something George could never have done yes. alone. Yes. So. We are using both uh, 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 assets, yes. the asset of the brand yes. and the asset of the tuner. Right. And, and the, the combination is just great. And I think the future of individualization right. is just starting. Yeah, People will want to have something that they are the only ones to own. Totally agree. So, you know, like, I think one of the reasons, for example, everyone really loved, for example, bronze watches is they all age differently. And people are now in an era yeah. where, you know, they want to have things that are individual yes. as opposed to things that are uniform, right? And I think that you have some great foresight related to this in terms of encouraging people to say, okay, express yourself through Absolutely. Right? So, the, the, I, I love the, the, the relationship with, uh, with uh, George. Yes. I love it also because I love him. Yes. I think he's a great guy. <laughs> he's a great guy. He's a great guy. guy. And clearly, truly loves watches as well. Because yeah, he's, 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 asked, he's one of yeah, the Yeah, he bought one. I know. Can you imagine? Fact, he saw me wearing this one on my wrist and he was like, how did you get it? <laughs> so I know there's a big... He's uh, getting it tomorrow? Or? Uh, no, there's a big dinner on Tuesday. 
Uh, okay. At your favorite restaurant in Lausanne. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, at, yeah, at yeah, Lausanne, yeah, yeah. We're going to have dinner together, right? Don't, don't try to steal the watches from us. On and the 27th, uh, and, we have the dinner. And they're going to have the dinner in the 27th. an undisclosed restaurant in Lausanne. <laughs> so tell me a little bit more about uh, how you feel that Hublot has, is, is, is moving along. You know, it was so extraordinary to see so many star football players uh, out on that pitch uh, to get, kick off the program with uh, the World Cup in Russia. <laughs> I tell you, now I tell you something. I swear it's the truth. Yes. I swear. In 1976, yes. I was for the first time in this fair. Yes. With AP. Yes. As I was nobody in those days, and because for the first year they told me you cannot work, yes. you must learn. Right. So I have never been in the business. I didn't see collections. I didn't see the customer. I was just with the production people. Right. And then. In March, I was entitled to come to the Basel. Okay, sure. it was my start. Right. Very cool. As a, in, as a salesman. Yes. So I came to Basel and I saw the collection right. for the first time, and I was oh, such an emotion because there were so many great watches. Yes. I mean, oh, I never seen so many. <laughs> Incredible, right. ultra slim like this, and yes. then the royal lords and yes. Oh, yes. This emotion yes. has never left. Me, Incredible. my memory. Incredible. I swear now on my son Pierre. Yes. When I came. Yes. To, it was Wednesday. Yeah. Two days ago. Yes. When I entered the Hublot booth. Yes. And Ricardo said to me, the collection is totally is on the table. Do you want to have a look? Yes. Now you will see the whole. Because from time to time I see one piece, you know, when they are in the development. Yes. But for the first time I saw the entire. I said to Ricardo, Ricardo. I have the same emotion than in 1976. Incredible. So I had the same emotion in 76 yes. than I have now in 2018. It's incredible. And I told him, you see, that's the sign why I cannot retire. <laughs> and you can't retire. So this is one thing, I mean, you know, Mr. Beaver, I know you're super busy, but I just want to tell this story. Or I'd like to ask you to tell this story a little bit as well, because, you know, if you guys follow Mr. Beaver uh, on Instagram, it's JC Beaver, at JC Beaver on Instagram, you'll see that not only is he overseeing, you know, LVMH group is, uh, groups watches and, and bringing them to higher and higher levels of achievement, not only is he overseeing three amazing brands, which are, let's say, let's say three of the most, two of the most successful brands in, in modern watchmaking, one of them that's on its way. but. You got to go back to the 1980s, right? And he was one of the guys that really kind of rescued mechanical watchmaking and really brought this entire culture back. You know, I don't know if you guys remember uh, the 1735, right? Yeah. At the time, this was in the 80s, Jean Claude Biver launched the world's most complicated watch at the time and brought back the, the renewed the era of complicated watches. And that's in the 80s, dude. You know, and could you imagine split second, tourbillon, minute repeater, perpetual calendar? It was the most complicated watch at the time and was a symbol that he believed in mechanical watchmaking and this culture was gonna come back, right? And so how does it make you feel, Mr. Beaver, to, you know, this many years later, almost almost uh, half a century, yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> almost yes. half a century later, to see, uh, so you see so much um, of, of the activities around this fair being in some ways very much attributable to of you course. and yes. to those pioneers yes. at the time. Does it make you happy? Or? Of course it makes me happy. It makes me proud. You know, uh, uh, when we were hippies, we said we must leave two traces before we die. Yes. And you must look from your bed <laughs> a few hours before you die back. And you must see one trace, which is the trace of love. Yes. Love which I have given to people. Yes. Uh, and then the second trace, we said, must be your achievement in your business. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so the day I'm going to die, yes. I will look behind me and I will say, wow. Yes. Uh, with Blanpa, <laughs> we have left an incredible trace yeah. because we were the initiators, we were the influencers yes. of the return of the mechanic. Yes, watch. absolutely. And in those days we were saying to the customer, you have the choice to buy accuracy, because quartz was accurate. Right. You can buy the accuracy with a battery, or you can buy the fantasy <laughs> with a mechanical movement. Right, right. And the people said, what do you mean? Yes. We said, the accuracy with a battery is due to one day become obsolete. Yes. And the fantasy <laughs> uh, uh, with a mechanical movement, who cares if it's three seconds or five seconds less or more, 
but it is due to become eternal. Yes. And eternity has no competition. Absolutely. So if you buy a Blanca or a mechanical watch, nobody can compete with you. <laughs> if you buy a quartz watch, sure. then you know one day you're going to throw it away. Exactly. And I have the example. I have an Omega from 1978 yeah. when I was at Omega. Right. Uh, sorry, 79. Yeah. I came to Omega in November 79. Yes. And Omega gave me, as product manager, to wear mm -hmm. a quartz watch. <laughs> because it was. The thing people to wear. People were enthusiastic. Yes. It's new. Yes. Ah, it's yes. quartz. And it's this, a Beta 21 watch, right? And yeah, this exactly. quartz watch had yeah. no crown. Right. It had no crown because they wanted to show you don't need to, to, to set it. To set it right. because it's always accurate. Right. And it never stops. Yes. So you don't set it. Yes. So they said it's uh, without a crown. Right. So they gave me this watch. They lent me the watch. Yes. When I left Omega in 1980 to buy Omega uh, to buy uh, Sw uh, uh, Blancpain, yes. I said. Can I buy this watch? Yes. Because it's a souvenir, it's the first one you, well, gave, you, yes. you gave me. They said, no, we are generous, you take it with you. Oh, it's nice. a present to say bye-bye. Now I have it. My son developed, the Pierre, the fifth son, he developed, great. Great. he yeah. wants to do a brand, Yes. a watch brand. Wow. I, t I told him, I can help you, <laughs> uh, but first make me a message. Yes. And I told him, you know, for instance, the message of Hublot is fusion. Yes. The message of uh, TAG, uh, of, uh, of uh, Zenit, is the future of tradition. The message of Blancpain is uh, we do, we, 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 ha we haven't done quartz since 1735 and, and we, we never, never will. do. Yeah, so exactly. bring me a message yes. and then I help you. Yes. I'm still waiting. Um, <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but, but, yeah. So, uh, but I said, I'm going to show you my first Omega watch. Yes, yes. We go, the watch doesn't work, of course, <laughs> because the battery is empty. Sure. Yeah. I bring it to Hublot. Yes. I say, hey guys, you, can, you know something about quartz? They yes. said, yeah, of course. We, uh, can you change me the battery? No yeah. problem, Mr. Yes. Beaver. I come back yes. next day. Have you changed the battery? No. Why? This type of battery Does doesn't exist, exist anymore. Of course. So this watch will never work. <laughs> it's just a bloody work. Yeah, it's, it's My a, father <laughs> gave me the Jäger Le Coult. Yeah. No, it was called Le Coult in those days. Yes. He gave me Le Coult watch yes. that his girlfriend, which became my mother, yes. offered him when he got engaged in 1947. Yes. He gave me the watch. And he said to me, okay, my son, keep this watch, take care of it. Yes. It's the watch of your mother, yes. which he gave me. You see, my name is yes. in And I played like that. I said, thank you, Papa. Wonderful. Wow. I love it. It looks great. Yes. And then I put it on my wrist and I said, but it's working. <laughs> That's great. 47. Amazing. Working. Amazing. So you have the difference yes. of eternity yes. and obsolescence. Yes. And that, that was our talk, yes. that's what the way we promoted Blancpain. Yes. If you promote Blancpain yes. or any mechanical watch that way, yes. for sure you're going to sell. Of course. Because who wants to buy obsolescence? Exactly. Nobody. Exactly. We all need eternity. Exactly. We all need to be linked to eternity. That's it. Thank you so much, Mr. Beaver. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. My and pleasure. Thank also. you for creating the next, <laughs> uh, next phase in watchmaking. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Fantastic. Great interview. Great. Awesome. Oh, thank you.